Hi everyone, welcome to another video on conditional probability. So in conditional probability, what we're looking for is the word given, and then after that we're looking to modify the sample space. So let's see how it works in these problems. So it says two fair dice are rolled, find the probability of the following. Okay, so it, just to get the sample space going, it says two fair dice are rolled. So I'm going to go ahead and set up our two fair dice rolled sample space. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then from here we do add them. That's why I put the little plus there. So two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Okay, so there, there's the sample space. So we have the 36 outcomes for now. However, let's now read the, the rest of the problem. Okay, so it says, what find the probability of rolling doubles given, let's do it in green, given that the sum is at least 5. Okay, so the sum is at least 5. Five. Um, remember, the least means five is the least, and you could have more than five after that. So this is the same as five or more. Okay, so I'm going to block that in. Here it is. Like that. Okay, so these one, two, three, four, five, six values are out. So I'm just crossing them out. Okay, so that means our new sample space is a size of 30. All right, so that's our sample space. And then inside the sample space is where I'm looking for the doubles. Okay, so I'm, roll, I'm looking to roll doubles. Okay, so in dice, when we say rolling doubles, it means both dice are the same. So one and one, but that's not in the sample space. Two and two, but that's not in the sample space. Three and three is. Four and four is eight. That one is. Five and five. And six and six. And so we would say, well, there's four possible doubles inside the sample space so that means our probability is let's let's use just the regular p equals notation i have four numbers circled out of the sample space of 30 and then from there we usually reduce it so they're each divisible by two two out of 15 and if we needed a decimal i mean we could plug that in Okay, so that's how we could find these. Okay, so again, the word given instantly modifies the sample space, so your denominator is going to change from what it might have been from no given. Okay, so usually it's 36 outcomes in a, in a two-dice roll, but here it gets modified. All right, so let's see number two. It says rolling a seven given. Well, I'm going to go ahead. All right, so since it's two dice being rolled, I'm going to go ahead and just get another table going because that one's too messy. So one, two, three, four, five, six... One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, so there it is. So we'll write this out each time. It's a little tedious, but also it, it's pretty fast and it can really help. All right, so let's read that. It says, rolling a 7 given the first die is odd. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and say that this, these are my first die right here. That's that, those, those are my first die rolls. And it's saying that it has to be odd. Okay, so that would be this 1, 3, and 5. However, so I circled it. I want to be careful. If I do roll two dice and the first die is odd, Below the bar are the t actual outcomes, so that would be these six, and another six, and another six. Okay, so all of these are out, and I'm just crossing it out. Okay, so, so now our sample space, one more arrow, our sample space is 18. Okay, because 6, 12, 18 numbers are currently circled. So that means that's our denominator for this problem. And then now let's look back and it says, okay, so rolling a 7. Okay, so it looks like I have a 7 here, a 7 here, and a 7 here in this sample space. 
So there's three out of out of 18th then for our problem. So the probability of rolling a seven, let's use the given notation, rolling a seven, given the first die is odd, let's just say it like that, is equal to the three that are circled in purple out of the 18th total that were in the modified, the given sample space. And then from there, well, we would, would reduce it is one sixth. Okay, so that's how we break it down, though. So always, that, that's usually the best way to do it. Okay, so in this example, so I got two more in this problem. It says two cards are drawn without replacement from a well-shuffled standard deck of cards. Find the probability that the second card is a red card given, okay, given that the first card is a heart. Okay, so the way that we want to break this down, so I, I don't think I want to write all 52 cards. I want to just break down this given statement. So they're saying, given the first card is a heart. So initially, we had 52 cards, but we're going to take away one heart. Okay, because they're saying the first card that is drawn is a heart. So 52 cards, but we're going to take away, oops, that says tag, take away one heart. And note, hearts are red. Okay, so I'm noting that because it, it, it told us find the probability that the second card is red. So let me underline that right now. The second card is red is what they want. So that's why I made a note for it. Okay, so that means our new sample space is really 51 for this problem. Because we had 52 cards, but we're taking away one of them, and it happens to be a heart. Well, there were there were 26 reds to start, but we're taking away one of them. Because if we take away one heart, that means that we are also taking away one red. So 26 red cards uh, minus one red card. Okay, so that means we should now have, so I'm going to write this as the number in our event is really just 25. So 26 minus 1 is 25. And then from there, well, I can just put these two together as my probability, 25 out of 51. That's it. Okay, so with this one, I'm, I'm just breaking it down into words instead of writing out the sample space. That can be useful on problems with cards. I, I, I would not recommend it on the dice problem like from above. Okay, so let's see one other in this video. So here we've got 50 people were randomly chosen when leaving a carnival. They were asked if they rode the Ferris wheel. The results are recorded in this table. Let E1 represent a person under 20 years old and E2 represent riding the Ferris wheel. Okay, so E1, I'm just gonna mark that. So this is under 20 which means the complement, so just kind of filling in the table, so under 20 years old, the, the complement, not E1, would be 20 or older, just to get things marked right now. And then they say E2 represents riding the Ferris wheel. Okay, so I'm going to say just ride for short. The complement then would be to not ride it, not ride for short. Okay, so there they are. And then with these tables, it's usually best to go ahead and get the totals in each direction here. Okay, so I'm kind of doing it a little weird. There we go. Oh. Okay, so there we go. So probably total should be right there. Total to make it a better looking table. Okay, anyway. So total, well, we could add vertically 29. Uh, we could add vertically 21. And then we could add horizontally, that's 28. And then that's 22. Adding vertically and adding horizontally for these last ones should be the same number, and it is, it is 50. Okay, so that's the 50 people that were randomly selected in this survey. All right, so now that we have this table marked up all, sort of, all sorts of nice and based on what they wrote, now we can find whatever probability Here's where they gave the notation immediately. So if it helps, we could write it in words. So the probability that they are 20 or older, given 
E2 is riding the Ferris wheel. So let's just say ride. Okay, so the given part, the given part is what's important for us. Okay, so that's telling us use the number of people that rode the Ferris wheel as the sample space. Okay, so I'm going to mark this table multiple times in this problem. So I will erase in between these these uh, numbers. Okay, so um, if you can't erase, I, I apologize, but just to save time, I'm going to use the erase after this problem. Okay, so we will use ride. So that's that 28 right there. So that's telling us that should be the denominator for this problem. And then in that 28, look at, and I can even circle, we could actually have circled this whole thing like that. Okay, so in that 28, you're looking at the 20 or older. So the not E1, we can mark it however way we want to mark it. Let's mark it in purple, though. So the not E1 would be 8. So it's saying 8 out of 28. And then from there, well, you can simplify. Okay, so you've got uh, each of these is divisible by 4, so it would be 2 sevenths. Okay, so there it is. Okay, so that so as soon as you see given, that's how we want to break it down. Okay, so let's look at this next one. And let me go ahead and erase those other ones right now. Okay, so if you need to pause it, but there they are. Let's erase. Okay, so just so my – it's easier that I could reuse the same thing over again. All right, so in this problem, it says a person did not ride the Ferris wheel given – okay, so given – the person was at least 20 years old. Okay, so at least 20 years old is the 20 or older. Or older. So if I wanted to, I could write this using their notation as well. Okay, so a person did not ride the Ferris wheel is the not E2, given the person was at least 20 or the 20 or older is marked as not E1. Okay, so if I wanted to rewrite it in the symbols, I could. Okay, so anyway, I am going to just say, well, we need the not E1 as our sample space. So here's, here's not E1's information. The total is 21. So that's what would be in the denominator. And then in that column, I'm looking at the not E2, or the people that did not ride the Ferris wheel. Okay, so here's not E2, but only inside of that in the green is 13. And then 13 out of 21 does not reduce. So that's going to be our final answer. You, uh, you could change it into a decimal if you prefer. Okay, so that's how we break these ones down. Again, just mostly looking at modifying that sample space. All right, so let's look at these others. Uh, actually, let's, let's go ahead and let me go back to number one real quick. So in the previous video, I did mention there, there is a formula that you could use. It's here, but usually I don't use it because it's. I don't think it's worth it. Notice every problem that I've done, I haven't needed it. But maybe it, just to show it, just in case, let, let's at least show this one. And I'm going to use the symbols to show how it could be done with the formula. Now, the way that I think of it, I just say, well, I know and's involved. It is both of those with the and. Oops, I, I said and, and I didn't write the and symbol. Okay, so and. So it's the same same uh, letters that were in the given, just with and in between. And then over the probability of the second one, whatever the second letter is, or is, so in this problem it's E2 is the second, that's what would go in the denominator. Okay, and so here's where we can find all of those probabilities. Okay, so the probability that... Um, it, the person, or or the probability that it is E2, well, E2, here's E2, its total was 28 out of 50. Okay, so the probability of E2 was total was 28 E2 out of the total number of people surveyed was 50. And then the probability of E1 and E2, let me go ahead and erase those from the previous problem, and I'll highlight it this time. So the probability of not E1 and E2, well, here's not E1, here's E2, where they overlap. That would be the one highlighted part there. 
Okay, so that would be the eight out of the total number of people surveyed would be 50. Okay, so notice that these probabilities depend on the total number of people surveyed, not, not any given yet because we're applying the formula. Well, what's going to happen is the 50s cancel, and then it does give us the same thing. Okay, so, so I think it's just easier breaking it down the way that I did it the first time. But there is the formula. Sometimes it might be necessary to use the formula. It's, I think it's kind of rare in, in our most of our problems, and we can get away without it. But it's also available for you if you do want to try it out. Okay, anyway, with number three and number four, it's, it's kind of review. They're using and in this number three. So the probability of, of and we could write, I could write and if I want to, just to mix it up. Okay, so remember the probability, and you could also use the words as well. I'm going to stick to this, just the symbols here, and let me mark it one more time with some colors. Okay, so the probability of E1 and not E2. Okay, so probability of E1. Here's the E1 information, just to box it. And not E2. Here's the not E2 information. Remember, and is telling you get the overlap. Well, that's where they're in common, so that means our numerator is 9 in this problem. And because there's no word given in this number 3, it is the original sample space, so 50 is the denominator. Okay, so that, that, that one had no given in it, so use the original sample space. Okay, let's see this last one. Let me go ahead and erase those two, the markings, to make it maybe a little easier to see. Okay, so this last one here, it says a person rode the Ferris wheel or was under 20 years old. Okay, so again, no word, no given on there. We could, again, I'm going to use just to put in the symbols, rode the Ferris wheel is E2 or is the union symbol under 20 years old. Well, that, that's E1. Okay, so there's no word, there's no given word in the problem. So that means you're back to your original denominator of just 50. And we can put that down right now. And then the or is to count all of the people that rode the Ferris wheel. Let's go ahead and use um, our colors still here. Actually, I'll use highlighters. So rode the Ferris wheel. So the people that rode the Ferris wheel, that's, that's our E2, that's these. And then or was under 20 years old. Let's use highlighter again. Or was under 20 years old. Under 20 is this column. Remember, the or is to count anything that's marked. But be careful to, with the way you mark it. Or, or that's how I, I'm going to do it. There is also the union rule. But I'm just going to say these were the three that are marked. So I don't want to use the totals in this problem because that means I would be adding too much. Those would be important for the union rule. Here I'm just using it like a Venn diagram where I'm counting just what's marked in each of those individual events, not the total of all of those events. Okay, so I, I'm going to do the 20 plus 8 plus 9, and so that gives us 37 over 50. And then that does not reduce, so that's our final answer. Okay, so sometimes they'll throw in these problems um, – like review-ish, three and four here on this problem where we'll review, and an or getting used, but still they're key words, so box them up just like we did. Given means you change the sample space, though. Okay, so that's, that's it for our conditional probability. If you do have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.